So, are we good to start? Great, so thanks for coming everyone. Uh, my name is Dmitry, I'm an engineer for Red Hat and I'm a core team member of Ironic and Ironic Inspector. And in this wonderful Monday afternoon I'll be talking about Ironic Inspector and bare metal inspection and uh, what is happening there, what happened during the Metaika cycle, what will probably happen in the Newton cycle. Uh, and yeah, this is for today, I'll talk about bare metal inspection. We'll explain how Ironic Inspector works for those who don't know yet. And I will talk about a few things that are not as obvious and not all people are aware of, but are very useful, which we support. And future plans, of course, future plans. So bare metal inspection or introspection. We can't agree on which word to use, to be honest. Uh, what is it? OK, we have a bare metal machine. It has a lot of properties. It's not like a VM, which is mostly controlled by you. You create how many CPUs, how much memory, and so on and so on. Bare metal machine has this all, so to say, hard-coded. And some of these properties we actually have to know for Ironic to successfully work. And this is CPU architecture, a number of CPUs, memory size, hard disk size, and uh, hardware addresses, MAC addresses of uh, uh, network cards. This is the bare minimum. You have to put all this information in Ironic database if you want. Uh, first three, if you want scheduling to work. The last one, actually, if you want deployment to work. But uh, these things are fixed, and we can't figure out it from the machine itself. So the inspection process involves going there and figuring out these properties, and maybe many more for uh, other use cases. Uh, Ironic supports inspection process via inspect provisioning verb, and we essentially have two types of inspection. Uh, first is out of band, how we call it. Uh, it's vendor specific, it's use vendor BMC features, for example, HPA ALO or Dell DRAC, uh, their management interface to figure out all this data. So it's essentially it's one network request, maybe a couple of requests to their API, and that's all quick, reliable. The only problem is, yeah, it's very vendor specific. And unfortunately, the IPMI protocol doesn't really support, doesn't really have support for these uh, things. It's going to change with the Redfish specification, which will include some of our inspection as supposed to become a new IPMI, but it's not yet there. So the second option, we have an in-band inspection, which involves actually booting some code on the machine. You take a RAM disk, boot the machine with this RAM disk, it collects information, puts it back, you process it. It works nearly for everything, well, at least for all enterprise hardware, definitely. For majority of non-enterprise hardware, just as well. It's minimum requirements. Unfortunately, it's, of course, longer. So boot time of a modern machine is several minutes, at least. Uh, sometimes not that reliable uh, because of pixie booting and so on. But yeah, we essentially have to support both. And this uh, second case is implemented by a project called Ironic Inspector, which I'll be talking about in the, uh, this talk. A quick summary. So Ironic Inspector project uh, is under the bare metal project umbrella with Ironic itself. It's a separate service with its own API, own client library, and so on. And here are a few stats. We have a relatively diverse community. A lot has happened. Uh, by the way, these numbers are from the Mitaka cycle. I forgot to write it here. So it's not overall. What we have, how it all works on high level. We have Ironic Python agent. That's a generic RAM disk for Ironic. Deployment is done via it as well. So nothing surprising here. It works for both inspection and deployment. We set up a static DHCP server. Uh, in most of our recommendations, in Piper's support and in DevStack plugin, it's DNS mask, but uh, we are pretty server agnostic in this case. Uh, it instructs all hosts with, uh, that are not on deployment to boot IPA for inspection, so it provides specific kernel arguments to say, okay, this boot will be for inspection. Please inspect the hardware. Uh, then we have our service. It, which has its own HTTP API, as I already said. It manages access to the DHCP server, essentially with IP tables, and processes the data itself. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, we have our own client library. 
in addition to what is provided by Runic. How it actually works. Uh, we require a node to be created. In most cases, I'll be talking about more cases a bit later. Uh, you only have to know power credentials. It's IPMI address, IPMI username, IPMI password, or in case of vendor technology like, again, Draco, ILO, it's ILO password and ILO address, and so on. And then you start the in-band inspection. You can use Ironic API with Inspect Verb, or you can use Ironic Inspector API directly. Ironic Inspector e API is used by Ironic. So it's kind of the same right now. Then what happens, we configure uh, firewall to ensure that this node can boot from our DNS mask server. We have some tricky magic to avoid clashes with Neutron actually there. Uh, set boot device, issue power on request, IPA boots, IPA collects uh, hardware information, post it back, we process this information, we update Ironic database with everything we fetched, and optionally we store the whole data from uh, the RAM disk in Swift. That's something not everyone knows, but yeah, we can actually store this data. So that was the basics, right? Uh, Inspection in Ironic requires these four things to be discovered, and we really discover them. Again, CPU, number, CPU architecture, memory, disk, MAC addresses, five things, actually. Uh, but there can be more. When you boot a RAM disk on the machine, you can figure out essentially everything that can be figured out from within it. You can even benchmark it, right? Why not do that? So what we have? Uh, the first thing is the whole process is pluggable. We have plugins on the service side where data processing happens, and we have plugins on the RAM disk side where data is collected. So, we can, so usually if you want to do something smart, you plug into both pieces. So on the service side, we can write plugins in Python. We call them processing hooks. We have two hook points. Uh, first, just after receiving the information, so we can validate it. Second, uh, when we are making changes, to the node itself. Why two parts? Well, between two parts, there is one more tricky piece. We actually have to find uh, a node in Ironic database by the data. So imagine, uh, boot a lot of nodes, they get introspection data, they put big JSON objects back, but they don't con uh, contain node UUID. So uh, there is a lookup process uh, which takes uh, MAC addresses, take APMI addresses that we figured out from within the machine and tries to match. So the first uh, hook runs before that, the second runs after. Th that's uh, uh, the important difference. So the first hook cannot update the running uh, node because we don't know the node. But it can do validation. In including it can help actually the lookup process. And the RAM disk size, we call them collectors. They, uh, yeah, by the way, I didn't talk about the example, right? This is a simple example which I extracted from our standard plugin set. It just, if RAM disk reported error, rise it during introspection. The real one is a bit more complex, but the idea is like that. Collectors, okay. Uh, collectors are built into the IPA image to fetch more information. And unfortunately, adding a collector involves a re rebuilding your image. What can be done? Uh, we enable and disable collectors via the kernel command line once they are built in. And here is the example. The Python function, let's update the data record with something. That's not a real thing, actually. I just made it up when building this presentation. So if you try it and it doesn't work, blame me. Uh, just an example of uh, one of plugins that we have that people usually are not aware of. We have extra hardware plugins on both RAM disk side and service side. It uses a hardware Python library, and it collects some enormous amount of information. I think people counted it was around 1,000 facts from the node. As, and we can then store it in Swift, and then you can do something with it, and that's what people actually do. This is how you enable that, enable a collector on RAM disk size, enable a processing hook. And I was talking about benchmarking. This thing can run benchmarks and add this to data, the results of these benchmarks. You can benchmark uh, CPU size, memory, uh, disk I/O operations. 
Uh, again, we, we require one more configuration option to enable that because this benchmarking usually takes like two, two three minutes. And uh, the more CPUs you have, the more disks you have, it will go linearly. But yeah, very, help, very helpful thing. You can use it. Next thing that people don't quite know about, and it's very cool. So everything I was talking about before is extending introspection uh, by an operator. So you install some plugins, you configure your ironic inspector service to use them. But what about the user? What if you give a user of our API ability to extend the process? And here is how we have API uh, for things called introspection rules. You essentially define a small snippets in JSON based domain specific language, like that, which will be run on every introspection. So again, the difference is this is user driven. This can be created via API, deleted, edited, and so on. So no operator intervention is required install wise. Simple example, I know people actually use something like that. If you find out that memory is too low, fail the introspection. Why not? A bit more complex example, it's again a bit made up, but still can show some. If you, uh, you can in inspect the current system board manufacturer and, for example, figure out if all disks are rotational are not rotational, and set some capability on Ironic node. Then uh, after the capability is set, it can be used by Nova for scheduling. So this uh, capability discovery is a big topic in Ironic Inspector. We're really interested in having more of that. Uh, to, uh, and actually, uh, O is using it very heavily for process code profile matching. That's how we call it. This essentially is take creating these rules and adding a profile capability to a node, which then is used for scheduling. If you look in triple documentation, it actually is there with examples of uh, such rules. This one. A lot of people were asking me, okay, introspection is good, but what if I don't have to create a node before introspection? This is something that people call discovery. Uh, I was resisting it for quite some time due to numerous reasons. But here it is, in the Metaica cycle, we actually have added that. The difference is uh, you don't have to create a node record. It will be created. So you combine enrolling process with introspection process. How it works? Very, very high level. You power on the node, maybe manually just go to the server and press the button, maybe via some CMDB IPMI tool directly. And next steps are essentially the same. IPA is booted, data is collected, data is sent back to Ironic Inspector. Then Ironic Inspector tries to find a node. If it fails, it creates a node. Uh, that's not on by default. You have to enable that behavior, actually. And then, uh, for example, you can use introspection rules to populate power credentials. You can, if you know the defaults. For example, uh, I know the default credentials for Dell machines. Probably a lot of people here know them, right? If it, de uh, if it detects that a uh, manufacturer contains Dell, and this auto-discovered flag is set by the discovery process always, so we don't touch nodes that were not discovered that are already existing. Then we can set a driver, ironic to more specific one. We can set, uh, a t from inventory, we can take BMC address and set it a drag host and set the default credentials. So with this uh, introspection rule in place, you can actually just use this node for deployment right after discovery. For more generic cases, of course, you might want to go there manually to, to the node to populate IPMI credentials or to use your CMDB, for example, to fetch them. That's another interesting topic which you don't quite support yet. And this brings me to future plans. Uh, CMDB integration. I know there are a bunch of folks who are really interested to be able, after discovery or after introspection, to go to CMDB with, for example, with APMI address or with MAC address, which we detected, and fetch all the remaining data from it. And combine it as all whole process. It's especially useful for discovery. We can, 
We come back with discovered data, we need IP micro credentials, we need everything like that. You go to SIMDB, you combine what is discovered in band with what you have in SIMDB, and as a result, you have a node ready for deployment, essentially. Next, um, Ironic Inspector is not HA ready. At the current moment, it can run only in one instance, at least safely run. If you run it on several machines, several Ironic Inspector instances, there are DHCP, support to clash, and so on. So big topic for Newton, we want it to become HA, at least in the sense of you can have several instances of Ironic Inspector running in your cloud. One is cute, other are working. Introspection rules, as I said, we have big interest in the capability discovery, using introspection rules and without introspection rules. There are even talks about making introspection rules in a full-featured programming language, which a lot of people hate, but maybe. And that's it. It was, yeah, it was not really short, but I have plenty of time for questions if you have any. Thank you. Yes, please. What hardware has given you the most problems? <laughs> Every hardware. <laughs> Well, um, our big problem is with hardware that doesn't have reliable IPMI access or something like that. For some hardware, IPMI address cannot be discovered from inside the machine. It also happens. So, yeah, sometimes we have to apply workarounds here. Uh, uh, some hardware have, doesn't have a unique IPMI address, so we can't use it for lookup. There's pretty lot of hardware, actually, of this kind. So, yeah, we have workarounds in place for this particular case, by the way. So if IPMI bridging, for example, is using, we somehow work around that. Uh, any more questions? Yes, please. Um, for the <clears throat> combination of the discovery with the introspection, how do you match when you have heterogeneous hardware? You look for what you've discovered in Ironic to see if it's already enrolled. But how, if they're all the same, how can you differentiate between what you've discovered and if you know if it's already been enrolled or if you create a new ironic record for it? So two it's the same two things that we use for lookup. First, MAC addresses. Uh, ironic node should have MAC addresses in the it ports database. Uh, second thing is IPMI address. If it can reliably detect that also, with the exception of some cases, like I mentioned above, it, uh, above, it should be unique. Um, question. Yeah. So, um, do you have any plugins developed already that would allow you to pull hardware out of your OpenStack cluster, run it through a bunch of burn-in tests, and then reintegrate it back in? So if you wanted to, say, run your cluster on repurposed hardware uh, and then just continually test for performance or for any sort of failures that you might be able to detect through memory tests or other hardware burn-in tests? Great question. Thank you. Uh, that's one of the topics I should have put on the future plans, probably. Um, Ironic has a cleaning process. Despite its name, it's just a generic set of operations that are run be before deployments. So my personal plan, hopefully for Newton, is uh, maybe to have an inspector running in this cleaning process. So when you decommission the node, it runs through inspection, maybe compares information with what you have in Ironic, maybe do benchmarks and fail something. If you see benchmarks are too low, you can create introspection rule, right, to fail introspection if disk operations is too low. So yeah, we don't have it there right now. It's not too hard to actually make it happen, so someone just has to do that. Okay? Mm. I think this is a follow-on to just the previous question that was on this side. So when you have a, a bare metal machine and you do some kind of work on it, it, it could be just uh, repair work, but it could actually, maybe they threw in some new drives or something or added another NIC. How, is that handled by Ironic or Ironic Inspector? And, and what's the best practice for doing that? Um, so, sorry, I didn't quite get the Particular, question. Particular like hardware upgrades, like you add something. So you've already, you've already got this node in Ironic but you, need, you add another, uh, let's say you add a bunch more RAM, or you mm -hmm. add another disk, or you add another NIC. How, how do you handle that in Ironic? Because you've already got it in your database by its, like its primary NIC or something, it's, it's indexed by something. 
how do you how do you manage that change? Yeah, it's not happening automatically, so we don't have real-time update of that. You can rerun introspection on the node just in the same fashion as in previous question, right? Between deployments, for example. But yeah, so. Yes, uh, the question was whether inspection can update existing records. Yes, it will uh, update the records if you rerun on the same node. So, um, uh, I've got a specific problem I'm trying to solve where I don't know what, uh, I've got hundreds of machines and I'm trying to figure out which switch ports are connected to it. And the only way to figure that out is to turn the machine on. Can I use Ironic sort of outside the scope of OpenStack where I can fire it up and maybe ex like bond a couple of ports so I can look at it from a switch side? You know what I'm talking about? Instead of, instead of using it um, to stage uh, you know, my OpenStack bare metal, but can I use it just for the inspector? Uh, well, inspector is pretty bound to Ironic. You can use Ironic and inspector standalone uh, independent of the whole remaining OpenStack. That's true. Even without Keystone authentication. Uh, so, so Ironic plus inspector are pretty much independent. As to uh, what you were asking about switch port discovery, yes, it's a big topic in Ironic right now. We're working on tenant separation. And for that task specifically, we need to be able to detect uh, which switch ports node is connected to. It's not there yet. I hope to land it in Newton cycle. You can write right? Yep. Uh, I think there is one proposed. It needs to be updated, but yeah. Yep, so we just have to wire them in. Hopefully we can do it pretty soon. Uh, anything else? Oh. <laughs> A couple more, yeah. I think we have time. Okay, um, can I put my own tests in Ironic? Can I extend it so, you know, uh, you were talking about running a benchmark or whatever. Okay, this is back kind of the switch thing, but can I run my own uh, inspector uh, function? Yeah, uh, this is these parts. Um, just, yeah, for example, this one is running on the RAM disk, right? I'm doing a pretty simple thing, but you can actually... Benchmarks are implemented the same way as a separate plugin, so you can run benchmark here. This part goes to the RAM disk. So you built in the IPA RAM disk, this Python snippet, and it will do everything you want. Uh, yes, please? How do you, um, do you have anything that helps you deal with um, pools of MAC addresses that can move around and be dynamic on your host? Like we use uh, Cisco UCS, right? We get MAC IDs going all over the place. So. Yeah, we don't quite deal with it right now. I uh, probably should ask uh, Cisco Force for more details on how it works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've seen in some tools, like this is kind of goes back, but Foreman, right? You get MAC IDs that get caught up in your, your fact tables and you have to go delete them manually, you know, if, it, if you recycle an, a MAC ID or something. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Uh, Ironic doesn't deal with it, I think, just as well. I have a fixed port database. It's an interesting topic to consider. I know some folks. Uh, we're asking about what to do with, uh, it's not only about MAC addresses actually, all, all other resources can be allocated on demand for such systems. So it's not there yet. Yeah. Uh, uh, please use the microphone. One of the, one of the options for Inspector is what to do uh, when it reruns on the same node and recognizes the MACs have changed. Yes. So that might answer your question. Yeah, thanks for reminding that. Actually, uh, we have a lot of configuration options. Uh, one is controlling whether we overwrite information. We can prevent overwriting of information, so it only adds new information but never uh, removes existing one. And yeah, we have uh, several options for how to deal with MAC, uh, with MAC addresses, whether to remove ports that we didn't find, which ports to add, add all ports, or all ports that got IP addresses, only ports we use for PXC booting, for example. This all kind of thing can be tuned in the configuration file for an inspector. Yeah, thank you. Yes, please. Uh, question here is, uh, do you actually support like the multi-NIC or NIC bounding, et cetera? And also, how do you deal with uh, like a multi-tenant network to make sure the network isolation? For VM side, we can use SDN, but for bare metal, is there any way out there to do the same thing? Uh, the great question, I think I'll start with the second one because, uh, well, with the first one, I'm not quite sure that's an answer about Nick bonding. We don't do it.
Yeah. For the second uh, question, hmm? yes. yes. For the second question, it's a bit more interesting. So the tenant separation is an ongoing work in Ironic, and inspector wants to support that. But with one problem, uh, to be able to switch networks, you have to know MAC address. Uh, knowing MAC address is not a requirement for Ironic inspector. But then network switch won't happen. So two options here. First, uh, well, you manually s switch the node to provisioning network before, before running inspection. And sec the second option, if you have, for example, out-of-band inspection support in your uh, hardware, but you need some additional features from inspector. You start with out-of-band inspection just to figure out MAC addresses. Then, then it then you probably fill in switch configuration manually, then you can use inspector. Uh, this is not landed yet, this support. I have a spec up for that. So m probably again, Newton is the goal for this work. So yeah, both, uh, answer to both questions is not yet. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. So um, what Jim is saying, we have a session on a tenant switching topic, cross project session. When? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So you can go ask uh, ask some questions there on this topic. Uh, anything else? Okay. Thank you very much.